Hey guys, this is Dr. Sangeet and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way and today's topic we are going to talk about the diseases of salivary gland. So without further ado, let's get started. And welcome back to another 10 in 10 series where we cover each topic under 10 headings in 10 minutes. And today's topic is the pleomorphic adenoma. So this is basically a tumor of salivary gland. As the name suggests, oma. Oma means that this is a benign tumor. Pleomorphic means that there is a diversity of the neoplasm. So we will be seeing the triphasic salivary gland neoplasm. That means the epithelial cells will be involved, myoepithelial cells and the chondromyxoid stroma. So in the connective tissue we are going to see the mucoid, myxoid, chondroid and osseous tissue within the tumor. So basically this is a variety. There is a complexity and diversity of the neoplasm which we can see. So that, that's how the name pleomorphic. So there is a complexity and diversity of neoplasm. Adenoma there, there, there is going to be a benign salivary gland, mixed salivary gland tumor. So Basically, this is the most common salivary gland tumor, most common salivary gland neoplasm and it can involve in any salivary gland. It can be parotid, submandibular, sublingual and even though up to extent of minor salivary gland neoplasm can be seen. So, neoplasm in the upper lip, cheek, so all of these neoplasm, any of the neoplasm can be seen but 80% of the cases it involves the parotid gland. The most common salivary gland of the neoplasm, it can occur in the children or it can occur in the adults, but the mean age we take is the 40 years of age. And decade is starting from the third decade, you can see it, but fourth, fifth and sixth decade are the most commonly affected. And if we look at the predilection, then females has got double higher chances than the males. So what causes pleomorphic adenoma is the radiation. So suppose if the patient has already gone through any radiation exposure because of any trauma or because of any cancer, previous cancer. So that can also lead to the pleomorphic adenoma as we know that radiation, expose, radiation exposure actually increases the chances of what happens. The SNI cells, it becomes more fibrous. If we expose the salivary gland to radiation, right? So the radiation increases the chances of having the pleomorphic adenoma. And we know that this is the most common salivary gland neoplasm that can occur in any age group. Otherwise, if we look at the mostly these cancer occur at very elder, in elder age, right? But pleomorphic adenoma can occur in any age group. And this is usually a solitary cancer. But we hardly see the multiple lesions, multiple growths in case of pleomorphic adenoma. And if we look at the pattern, see the all of the salivary gland tumor which we are going to cover, there will be slow growing, ex painless except one tumor which we will be talking about, the cylindroma wherein the actually the root is via the neural root. So that is mainly the via the nerve. So that is going to be painless except that all of the tumors of salivary gland are going to be painless. And one more a very specific unique feature of these salivary gland tumor if we compare with other tumor is that it is not fixed to the underlying structures. It is not fixed. These are freely movable tumors. Even though they have rubbery or soft neoplasmic growth, but still they are not fixed. They are freely movable tumors, freely movable growth. Otherwise, we have already studied all the tumors. In that, we have studied that tumors have got a tendency to get fixed, right? So, uh, this is something different. Except, again, the cylindroma we will cover in the upcoming videos. So, this is a slow-growing, painless, well-circumscribed freely movable, non-ulcerated. So what happens? This is this will be a slow growing, painless of course, well, deline well de delineated, nodular, exophytic growth and it will, it can affect any of the salivary gland. Of course, most common is the parotid, but it can affect any salivary gland. 
the surface is going to be non ulcerated the surface if you look at the surface of the neoplasm surface of the growth it is going to be smooth and lobulated and generally patient will not complain of any pain until and unless there is secondary infection so it is slow growing actually lesion takes several years to grow up to 1 inch of size so it take many years to grow up to 1 inch so the soft and rubbery neoplasm and the tumor is freely movable this is not fixed to the tumor is not fixed to the underlying tissues so well this is well circumscribed well circumscribed lobulated globular mass and which is surrounded by a capsule so if we palpate it we see that it is rubbery in consistency right and the mass is resilient with the bosselated surface if we cut it so cut surface will show us the variegated appearance with few hemorrhagic or cystic areas so what i we are going to see some of the uh, pleomorphic adenoma we see some gray white myxoid mass if we cut we see this kind of mass so histopathologically if we look at the pleomorphic adenoma as we know pleomorphic so it com comprises of diverse nature of epithelium and mesenchymal tissues component in the neoplasm so there is going to be the proliferation of the glandular basophilic epithelial cells now these glandular basophilic epithelial cells now these epithelial cells are basically polygonal spindle or stellate in shape now because they have got the tendency to form in a duct like structure so they are often filled with the eosinophilic mucin now again i'll repeat the proliferation of the glandular and the basophilic epithelial cells these cells are arranged in clusters and sheets so if we look at the epithelium of the pleomorphic adenoma we see that these epithelial cells they have got the tendency to form duct like structures and they are often filled with the eosinophilic mass eosinophilic mucin so what happens there is proliferation of these epithelial cells proliferation of these basophilic epithelial cells because if we see that they are basophilic ha huh, right basophilic basophilic so polygonal in shape they can be spindle in shape or the stellate in shape so there is a proliferation of these glandular because they have got tendency to form duct like structure so i'm telling that this glandular basophilic cells they can be in form of sheets or they can be arranged in form of clusters and the connective tissue is uh, having the metaplastic changes so there is going to be lot of um, malignant changes happening in the connective tissue that will result in the mucoid myxoid chondroid and osseous tissue within the connective tissue in the tumor so within the connective tissue of this tumor we will have the mucoid myxoid chondroid and osseous structures so that we will see so com we are going to see the com in case of connective tissue so we will see the mucoid myxoid chondroid and osseous tissue which is present in the ct so com in the ct we can see in case of pleomorphic adenoma ha huh. so if we take the cytology so cytological description is going to reveal us a unique fibrillar stroma so there is going to be fibrillary stroma unique pattern of fibrillary stroma because see we can see all these patterns so there is a diversity of the neoplasm we can see a uh, myxoid mucoid chondroid osseous tissue in the structure so there is going to be a fibrillar stroma which which is not seen in any other kind of tumor and also in 70% of the cases of pleomorphic adenoma we see there is plag 1 fusion or hmg a2 fusion so we see that there is fusion because of the in the chromosome 8q at the region 12 and chromosome 12q at the region 14 15 so there is a fusion which is happening and this marker the all plag 1 and hmg a2 fusion we can also use for immunohistochemical histochemical markers so that also we can use it for the diagnosis purpose so we are going to basically diagnose we take the biopsy and we are going to diagnose in the histopathological section that will confirm us that that will tell us that this is pleomorphic adenoma see always remember that the most common salivary gland neoplasm is the pleomorphic adenoma and oma is the word as you can see there is oma right so that is a benign mixed tumor so most common and it can affect any of the tumors so what we are going to do we are going to do the surgical resection with the negative margins 
because we don't want that this tumor to occur see there is there can be a reoccurrence of pleomorphic adenoma even though it is less than 2% but so many patients has been seen with the reoccurrence of the pleomorphic adenoma at the same site so uh, we have to surgically resect it surgically remove it with the negative margins we cannot leave any of the margin we cannot do enucleation so while doing if suppose if it is involving the parotid gland which is the most common involvement so while doing the surgical resection surgical excision for the parotid gland we have to take care not to damage the facial nerve that all things we have to remember and this is about the pleomorphic adenoma as the name suggests pleomorphic so it can, it has got a diversity complexity of the neoplasm so there will be metaplastic changes mucoid myxoid chondroid osseoid these osseous tissues present within the connective tissue of the tumor always remember this that pleomorphic adenoma can it is a benign mixed tumor so it can involve any of the salivary gland it can be major salivary gland or it can be a minor salivary gland so guys this is about the pleomorphic adenoma i hope that you have enjoyed the video so if you have liked the video give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below and there is a link in the description box below to support me on ptm as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes so guys till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i will see you soon in the next video video.